Effectively working with multi-faced polygon models is key if you want to perform downstream processes such as manufacturing or structural analysis. In the January release of NX we've made this capability far more streamlined and more robust. Let's take a look at an example. As previously discussed, typically facet bodies are made up of just one single face. So in order to utilize them for downstream processes, it's necessary to split the mesh body up. In this case, we have a generative design and we've already divided some of the facet faces up. So let's take a look at the level one support. What we're going to do is we're going to just use the local offset to select one of the single faces and offset it by a certain amount so that that flanged area is increased in diameter. As discussed, level two support is when the facet operation crosses multiple faces and the impacted faces are merged into a single face. And to illustrate this, we will take a look at remesh. So we activate the command. We use the paintbrush to select areas on two faces. And you can see the, uh, the facet display. We modify the size of the facet, or the average size of the facet. And when we OK the command, it tells us that both faces will now be merged into one. And as you can see, as I select the face, you can see that the two faces have been merged. The third and final level of multi-face support is one where the facet operation crosses multiple faces, but the impacted faces remain separate. And to illustrate this, we will use divide facet face. Again, we will brush over the areas that we want to divide. Again, this crosses over two faces. And then on applying the command, you'll notice that we now still have separate faces. So we've looked at being able to edit mesh bodies that have no feature history. What happens if we have a mesh body that contains features? Let's take a look. So we're going to continue with our generative design and start to add some modeling features to it. We'll start by adding some holes around this flange area and select four arc centers to position them. Here you're seeing the power of convergent modeling where you can combine standard modeling precise geometry with facet geometry. We may also want to add some thickness to one of the flange areas. So in this case we'll use offset face to achieve that. We select the face, input the value, and there's our offset flange face. So we'll continue to review the model to check for any other anomalies. And on visual inspection, this top edge of this flange doesn't look very smooth. So maybe we need to do something about it. So I'm going to use the smooth edge command to fix it. I select the edge, but then I'm immediately presented with an alert informing me that the body has associative children and cannot be edited. One option would be to edit a copy or to remove the parameters of the bodies being edited, but I'm not inclined to do that. So let's see if there's another way. I'm going to enter the polygon modeling task environment to see if that'll help. On entering the environment, I'm asked to select the body I want to edit. It then creates an associative copy of the convergent body at a time before the features are added. I go through the same command of smooth edge I select the edge, I modify the smoothing factor, and then I get a preview of what the edge is going to look like. As I increase the smoothing factor, you notice that the edge becomes smoother and smoother. I can also increase the number of iterations, in this case to the maximum 10, and see what effect that has. And as you can see, the edge becomes even more smooth. But what about the features that we added? earlier on in the design process. Well, when we exit the task environment, the features then get replayed. 
so I've not lost any of my design intent. The polygon modeling tools inside of NX now really make working with mesh models so much easier.